Hey guys, it's Dave Dean here, just doing another video. Uh, this one's basically on high res. Um, as you guys all know that I run a DAP for my source, uh, high res DAP. So basically, uh, just wanted to go over a few things. Uh, I was watching a video there the other day, uh, yesterday actually, last night. Um, Matt Schaefer put out another one of his videos on uh, another Tesla that he does. He seems to be the most, a lot of his videos are Teslas, but uh, he did a Tesla with, uh, you know, I'm just gonna turn this off. Uh, Tesla with, um, what was it, uh, Moscone Pro Amps and um, Focal Utopia Ms for his speakers. And I believe Subwoofer too as well. And, um, anyways, a lot of his videos, if you've, if you watched any of his videos at the, near the end, when he's showing you like the front of the system, um, he usually has, uh, an Astle and Kern SB2000, uh, and those things are anywhere between four and 5,000 bucks in, in, if I was to order one online in Canada, right? Closer to the 5,000 in Canada, probably for you guys in the States, it's probably around 4,000 or so. Not sure what it is over in the UK, but, um, uh, it's basically the best DAP in the world uh there's nothing better than that at this point in time i'm sure there'll be other ones coming out probably uh, uh in the next year or whatever i know some got delayed because of the fire um over there with all the all the uh basically the the chips inside uh, they have no access to them for some places um so a lot of things got delayed because of that um but yeah, the SP2000 is basically the best DAP that you can buy, and it should be, right? It's the most expensive. Um, and uh, I was going to get an Astle and Kern, uh, not that one. I was I was checking out a couple of the other ones, uh, but I'm just going to hold off at this point in time because uh, I'm, I'm good with the, with the file player going digitally. Uh, like I said, if you're going to go analog, um, you, I mean, you can use, you can use these players to go analog to into your system. If you have a DSP, you can go uh, use two of the inputs as a auxiliary in and uh, do it that way. Um, the sound quality is gonna sound better doing it that way than still going into, to use it like CarPlay, using your phone basically, right? Um, it would be different if you're using your phone and you have uh, the camera kit uh, um, going into your DSP. Uh, that would be different, but uh, um, even if I went analog through this, this is still going to sound. I mean, we're we're talking like slightly better, right? Um, it's going to be slightly better than is if I'm using Apple CarPlay, uh, you know, because I have the Amp Pro in my system. So go basically, uh, the Amp Pro right now goes Tosh Link into my DSP, um, and it sounds good. It sounds really good, but this is still going to be slightly better both ways either analog or digitally um because i'm bypassing everything that's in here right and i'm going straight into my dsp so i know there's lots of debates on uh on high res right um and and to tell you the truth uh because everybody says you can't hear um you know higher than cd quality sound uh for the most part right and uh uh that's debatable right um I know for me that I've like certain high res, um, and I know I know Matt Schaefer brought out a, a good point when he was talking about credence and how credence is like you know twenty four one ninety two. It's like no credence isn't twenty four one ninety two. You can go and buy it like that, but it was never recorded like that, right? So, um, anyways, uh, go check out his video and go check out. They have actually a podcast where uh, Nick Wingate. Um, and that's who I was tr trying to think of the last, when I did my last video, the, uh, the guy that won all the sound quality competitions. I know I was saying Bill something. It's not Bill. It's uh, Nick Wingate who I was talking about that had the, um, the Focal Flax, um, that he was running in his Silverado, uh, with the three and a half, uh, Illusion Audio, uh, mids. Uh, and he won the competition in factory locations, right? When he had 500 and something pounds of sound editing. Anyways, they do a good, uh. You kind of have to skip forward to near the end when they, they're they talking about the high res stuff. Um, it's like, I think it's like a three and a half hour uh, podcast. Uh, uh, but he goes into a little bit, um, 
Nick talking about the high res and stuff like that. And uh, uh, he brought up like a Sony, uh, what is it, the, the GS9 or whatever it was that he used for his head unit before. Um, but yeah, you have to, uh, even with my Helix, the sampling rate on my Helix DSP is only 96, right? So if I try playing 24 to 192 songs on here, the some of them will play, but most of them won't. They'll be all messed up, right? Um, if I go digitally. So the only way I can actually play, you know, DST file, DST files or, uh, you know, 24, uh, 192 or higher, basically, um, is if I went analog out into my DSP, right? Uh, I can do it that way, but I can't go digitally in it. You, you get the odd song and the, and the odd thing that'll play, but um, most won't, right? But, uh, so I've had my system for quite a while now and I've had it like tuned properly for about a month and I've been listening to a lot of like everything, right? I tried out Spotify just for a bit. Um, I like the Spotify interface, but honestly, to me, it wasn't really much of a difference between Spotify, Tidal, um, Apple Music. It's all pretty similar, right? Um, and for those of you that are just going to use like connect your phone to your uh, your system or whatever. I mean, it still sounds good, right? Um, I think you just get a little bit better separation, a little bit uh, better detail. Um, for me anyways, when I'm going digitally into my DSP than I do when I'm using my phone. It's a little bit different sound and you can hear it on the tracks because I've, I've tested it. I've, I've went back and forth and back and forth. And I was going to do a video where I, where I kind of showed that on here but honestly you're not going to hear it through you're not going to hear it through youtube anyways because it's you just it's so subtle you, you really have to be listening to it and it's not going to show up through youtube uh guaranteed it won't right i've even seen another uh couple videos that people tried to show the differences and you can't <laughs> you can't hear anything uh through youtube like the difference you just can't um so anyways going back to that it, it and his point where he was talking about Cretans was never recorded in 24192. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> you know what? So it's kind of it's kind of garbage. You know what I mean? Some of that stuff that you buy, um, it, it's, you got to really be careful in what you're buying because a lot of these music guys are just trying to get you to buy the album again. You know, if you're going to buy something, it has to be recorded, like actually recorded in 24 192 right not not digitally remastered some of the stuff that's digitally remastered is okay some of it's worse than what the original recording was right when i've listened to it in my system um and it even sounds different they've changed quite a bit of stuff on it right so um you just got to be careful with that but uh um one of the reasons why i suggest you know you you can even compare it like if you're going to go buy like the top of the line Kenwood um, deck and then you compare it to like a file player or an Aslo and Kern or you know something else that's, that's up there like a mid-tier to like high end well the high end is going to blow the blow it out of the water right like an, an SB2000 is going to blow any deck on the market away like easily there's there's it's not even close you'll hear the difference like instantly so you had say so you had uh, the highest end Kenwood deck in your car and then you switch to uh, the SP2000. It's night and day difference. I've actually, I heard a guy, he had he didn't have the SP2000, but he had the SP1000. And then uh, he had the highest end Kenwood deck he could get. And he swapped between both of them. And it was like, it's like night and day. It was like crystal clear uh, when he was using his Astle and Kern player. And uh, like, you, he switched between the songs, right? Um, and it was like, it was it was like night and day difference. Like you can hear, it sounded like you had all new, and that's how it is. It sounds like you have all new equipment in your vehicle, right? Because it's it's so much detailed. The only thing I can compare it to is like for some of you older guys out there that used to you know have the high end deck every year. You used to go and buy whatever the high end, high end deck was, and it's almost like going to, from like a mid tier deck all the way to the highest end deck back in the day, right? Back in the eighties and nineties, um, it almost like it makes it sound like your equipment is not even the same equipment that you have in your, in your vehicle. Right. That's how, that's how good it sounds. Um, but that going back and forth, like the high res music 
it's still got to be a good recording, right? And then if you're going to digitally remaster it, you still got to... Uh, they brought up another good point on the podcast. I think it was Matt when he was talking about Van Halen. Like, I love Van Halen, right? But their music's recorded like crap. It's terrible, right? Uh, I even have it on here, like the high-res stuff. But it's not really high-res. It's just remastered, right? Is basically what it is. But it's... Uh, uh, it sounds like it's garbage compared to some of the other recordings, right? That are out there. Um, so anyways, look at, I always look at like signal, uh, signal to noise ratio things on whatever I'm buying. So if I'm buying an app, if I'm buying a DSP, if I'm buying, uh, um, whatever your source is going to be, I always look at signal to noise ratio. So for this, this guy's 118 signal to noise ratio, right? Which is, which is source, which is high, I should say. So, um, what do you, what, what, do, what do people do? Like when they're looking at their system and they're comparing everything together, it's like your system is only as good as its worst link, right? In the, in the system, right? So, so I got to, this is 118 signal to noise ratio. Um, the DSP is 117 if you're going digitally It's 111 if you're going analog in, right? Um, but it always starts at the source, whatever your source is, is going to, you know, like, like, uh, Nick Wingate was saying, shit in, shit out. Right. So if you had a shitty like deck or something and you, that was terrible or whatever, um, it's going to sound, I mean, it could sound okay, but like I said, it's, 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 it's only going to be so good. And it's like the Van Halen recordings. It's a shitty recording. So it doesn't matter how good your system is. Sure, your system can make it sound a little bit better, but it's a shit recording. So if it's a shitty recording, uh, it doesn't matter what you got in your vehicle. It's only going to sound so good because the recording's terrible, right? Unfortunately, there's there's a lot of shitty recording music out there, and you find that when you have a good system, you're like, oh man, I th thought this used to sound a lot better, but it's terrible, right? And it's a lot of the older music and stuff like that that's that's bad. And even some of the newer music, it's just like, like it's this is way too loud, right? With like, who the hell recorded this shit? It sounds terrible. You can't even like turn it up on on some some of the new uh, stuff that's supposedly, you know, better quality, but it, it's it's not right. When you listen to it, you're like, oh my god, this recording. Whoever recorded this is like terrible. Um, so high res does have its benefits. If it's recorded in high res, like, you know, some of the newer stuff. But if it's like digitally remastered, sure, some of it sounds better. Uh, but you have to have the good recording. That's the most important thing. It had to be recorded good at the start, right? So, so that's kind of like my thing on high res. Like I said, I tried... Um, some people can't even hear the difference really when, you know, say you're on, you're on Spotify and a lot of these people that can't hear the difference though, between Spotify and Tidal and stuff like that have shitty systems or not shitty. I shouldn't say shitty systems, but they have a lower, but a lower budget system or like maybe a mid system or whatever. Um, they're using your, their phone for a playback, right? Um, and if you're disconnected via USB or whatever on here, um, it's okay. Like, you know what I mean? It like, like mine sounds good if I have it connected, but mine's going through an app pro, right? From the app pro, uh, Tosh link out into my DSP, right? So it's, it sounds, it sounds good. Like it sounds good. I can play any, all the same songs on here and then switch it back and forth. Um, it's going to sound slightly different and you really got to listen to it but it's still this is always gonna this is still gonna sound better right and louder and that's another thing like when it, louder doesn't make it sound like that's not sq just because something is louder doesn't make it better so it's it's uh and, and i remember i was selling i was selling one of my amps on kijiji to a guy like uh i don't know this must have been like two and a half three years ago um I had a couple of Audison uh, LRX amps that I was getting rid of because I wasn't going to use them. And uh, he had, I remember he, he had a truck 
and he had an odd setup anyways because he had melees in the back for rear fill and then he he had high energies in the front and like the high energies are you know weren't as good as the the melees that he had in the back and uh anyways that was the first thing i noticed i'm like that's odd why he would do that um, the high energies were louder maybe that's and then i kind of figured after talking to him for a while he just likes things really loud right he doesn't care about center imaging he didn't have a dsp uh in his vehicle and he had some i think it was like a parrot i think it was called head unit or something like that because he was playing youtube music through there like not the youtube music music that you can that you can get that's similar to spotify and everything else like actual the youtube video music i should say so he he's like do you mind if i try it out first and i was like go right ahead right um so he had a he had an nvx amp in there and he swapped it out and it was an lrx what was it an lrx like uh it was a four channel so it was like 70 watts so it was, it was going to be less right away because the nvx was like 120 watts or something like that per channel um so he swapped it out already. He was like, oh, it's it's like it's not as loud and blah, 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 blah. Well, first of all, he didn't have his settings tuned after that, right? So he, he's just swapping in with the other amps' uh, settings already, right, that he already had on there. So, I mean, he would have had to do some adjustments. Is it going to be as loud? Well, no, it's not. But should it sound better? It should. It's got a higher, higher signal to noise ratio on it. Um, than the other amps your noise floor should be a lot less too as well with that with the lrx amp than uh, the nvx too uh, i mean the lrx is old obviously it's an older amp and stuff like that and technology has improved quite a bit um so i mean it, it would be a subtle difference anyways because i think i can't remember what the signal noise ratio was on uh, the nvx amp uh but it was okay right it wasn't like terrible or anything like that um but my point is sometimes people think louder is better um, for sound quality. And it's not necessarily like that, right? Um, and that's sometimes with songs too, it's sometimes like that, right? Because I've heard songs off of like iTunes because uh, I used to collect iTunes songs before, right? It was just convenient. Uh, I was kind of like an Apple guy there for a while. Still am for the most part for some things. Uh, I can't stand that they still haven't came out with like a their high res or whatever they're doing with that other than the mastered with iTunes you know that kind of stuff but it's like what are you going to come out with high res get with the program before you get you know uh, Spotify's got something coming out at the end of this year um, you know what I mean there's Tidal there's like uh, a couple things I think in the UK that the uh, forget the names of it, uh, over there but um, um, there's Amazon right HD uh, so all these other music f formats are going high res and you know it's i don't get why apple apple always does its own thing um but it's kind of irritating at this point in time that they, they haven't came out with something uh they're gonna have to at some point in time i i would think like but who knows who knows with apple you know what i mean they always take forever uh when it comes to that kind of stuff to to make a change anyways but um um it's always going to be the recording right some things are recorded louder than others um so when you're comparing music uh, on here and you're trying to, you yourself are trying to hear the difference between, between you know, like a high res, high res music and just uh, say a CD, um, CD or MP3 or um, whatever file you're thinking of, always compare the exact same album. Because uh, I've made the mistake before and putting something on and testing both and i realized one of them was like remastered and the other one wasn't because the cover is the same everything's the same on it um and i thought oh wow that's that's a big difference but then i had to go look and realize okay one's remastered one wasn't right um and that was that was the difference in what i was hearing um so yeah so it, it's honestly now like still still with high res like there's more out there now than there was obviously a few years ago um and there's more more coming but just be careful because just because something says high res especially if it's older music it doesn't mean it's high res um because to me to my personal opinion it's got to be recorded like you actually have to have it recorded in say 24 or 192 or whatever you're gonna dsd or whatever whatever you're gonna record it in 
I think it's got to be recorded in that, not digitally remastered, right? And like I said before, some of the digitally remastered stuff, it's so-called high rev, sounds good. And some of it sounds better than the original recordings, but some of the original recordings sound better than the digitally remastered, right? Um, and you got, and, and a lot of it's just a money grab. I think like a lot of, especially the older music and stuff like that, that wasn't really recorded um, in high res. It's a money grab on a lot of it, right? And it's like, uh, I think one of the, one of the one of the groups it was like ZZ Top, right? So you know how some some of the things will digitally remaster something and back in like 2000, and then they digitally remaster it again in like 2018 or whatever, um, and then you listen to the original recordings. I think ZZ Top was one of them. I think it was like. Uh, um, what's the name of the, uh, the album with legs and, uh, uh, TV dinner and, uh, um, all their, all their main, well, legs, legs was one of the big hits off there, right? Uh, sharp dressed man and all that stuff. I can't remember the name of that album. Really good album, obviously. But I remember, I think it was the iTunes version, the original iTunes version that I downloaded. Uh, and it wasn't remastered. And when I played it in my vehicle, it sounded better than all of the other versions. <laughs> I, know, I know it was louder. And like I said before, louder always doesn't mean sounds better. But it just sounded, it was definitely louder because they definitely recorded it louder than the remastered stuff that I heard. And they've remastered their stuff, oh my God, like what, three times, I think. Um, and I think they just brought another one out. I don't know if it was 2020 or... 2019, 2018, something like that, where they uh, remastered it again. <laughs> and when I listened to it, it was just like, I don't know, I think I still like the original better than the high, all the high-res versions that they did. Um, especially when in my system, it was it just seemed more dynamic, right? Um, and it sounds different. It totally sounds different. And I like the originals myself more than the remasters when it came to that, uh, that particular album. Uh, and it's been like that for a few other albums that I've listened to. Um, so anyways, as usual, I kind of ramble on about, uh, this kind of stuff, but, uh, um, yeah, there, I mean, the daps are great. I mean, I've already showed you in my other videos, like if I'm, if I'm pushing buttons and stuff and there's not, there's honestly, sure. This is bigger and people have those iPad screens and stuff like that. It's bigger and it's great and stuff like that, but there's not really much of a difference, right? You're going to show your, like on here. If I was connected, it's going to be pretty much the same as uh, on here, right? Um, I never use this anymore. Anyways, the, the, the Sirius XM. I used to listen to Howard Stern sometimes on there. That's about it. Um, the music sounds terrible on FM and uh, Sirius and all that stuff. So um, I, did, I didn't uh, renew it. But, I mean, you're, this is the same kind of thing, right? Um, as you can have your album art, you have your album art, right? <laughs> So it's like, and then you have your track skip. Well, the track skip on here is almost the same size as on here anyways, right? But I can, you can store, I think it's like two gigs or something like that of music that you can store in here. I have a 512, uh, um, I shouldn't say, I should say two terabytes, right? But on here I have a 512 uh, gigabyte um, card that I have on here now. Um, and that's played out. I mean, think about it. You can't listen to that music in a day anyways, right? You know what I mean? It's just having access to a lot of stuff, which is nice, right? If you're in the mood to listen to whatever, but I don't even have my whole list on here. Right. And then I got some title stuff too on here as well. Um, I did have, I did have, um, Spotify on here and I did have, uh, Apple music on here. Well, I deleted both of those because title sounds better. <laughs> For the most part, right? Uh, it it sounded it sounded better for most of the stuff, and plus I already have the iTunes. I already have like eight thousand iTunes songs on here, and then I got a whole bunch of CD um, CDs on here too. And then, uh, like I said, I have a lot of everything, right? Um, so yeah, just be careful with the high res stuff because just because it says it's high res doesn't mean it's better quality. Uh, especially when you're talking the old school stuff. Um, like I said, it's a lot of that's a money grab. And some of it sounds better. Some of it sounds worse, in my opinion. Um, 
but that's like even with the regular music today, depending on what the recording is, right? Um, I've heard stuff that's like 44 one, uh, that sounds better than the 96 K, right? It's just, it is what it is. It's all about the recording who recorded it. Uh, was it, a, was it a good recording to begin with? Um, and that kind of stuff. So just be careful because not everything that's high res sounds better than CD quality or, you know, I won't even go into a uh, turntable <laughs> with the records. I, I won't even, I won't even, I won't even go down that rabbit hole, but, uh, but yeah. So if you're looking, if you got the budget, like if you know, uh, one day I'll probably get the high end Astle and Kern at some point in time. Um, but just remember, if you're going with the DAP, you can always have, uh, you're always going to have something like this. And a guy just reached out to me and asked me what I used for, to hold my DAP. So there you go. It's the Kenyan. Uh, they have like four or five different types of models. I think they have a pro out there. This is just the regular one. This was like 30 bucks or something like that. I like it cause it just snaps into place. Um, it just pops off, right? It just pops off here. I don't, there's no marks or nothing like that. It leaves easy to put, uh, easy to put on, right? Just goes in your fan. Um, yeah, most of the time in the, in the winter time here, which is like six, seven months out of the year, I use my defrost. I don't always use the heat that much. It gets pretty warm just with the defrost on. Um, but I've never had any issues. This thing gets warm as it is like, uh, the player in general gets warm, but it's not like hot, right? And then I have the case, but uh, 